So if you've clicked into this video, it is because you are a student that wants to achieve better grades in less time. Whether you do it to get accepted into your dream university or to be able to have more free time to enjoy your life out of academics, every student in the world would like to be able to achieve higher grades in much less time. In other words, to learn more in less time. And that's exactly what the following book is going to teach you. Hi, my name is Mario and I am a 16 year old A-level student from Spain. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about the book I think every student should read and that's How to Become a Straight A Student by Cole Newport. This book talks about the unconventional strategies developed by real straight A students from different universities in the US, including Harvard, Princeton, Yale, Dartmouth, Brown and Columbia to earn much higher grades in much less time. Although this book is primarily focused on uh, college slash university students, I am myself a high school student and have found if not as much value as any college student would. The book only analyzes those students that earn better grades not by studying 24-7 and sleeping 4 hours a day, but instead analyzes those students who are able to do very well without leaving their lives to a side and through the use of intelligent techniques. This enables the straight A student to enjoy life out of academics due to having lots of free time. In the book, uh, Cal Newport tells us how to become one of those straight A students by breaking down their time management and organization system and their way to deal with the urge to procrastinate. Apart from their smart note-taking approach as well as their ability to master exam taking, which we won't cover in this video. So let's get right into it. The simple truth is that the brute force techniques used by most students are incredibly inefficient. The book starts uh, introducing us to the idea that work done is equal to time spent times intensity of focus. Let's say intensity of focus is on a scale 1 to 10, 10 being the most focused. This means that if you spend 10 hours with an intensity of focus of 3, the same work can be done in 3 hours with an intensity of focus of 10. And that's the one thing I love about this book. Cal Newport is able to explain how effective study works through a simple formula. As you can see, I'm a science idiot. The work that took you all day Sunday to complete could instead be finished by studying an hour after breakfast, an hour after lunch, and an hour after dinner. The rest of the day being free for you to relax. So as you can see, intensity of focus is key on the amount of work we get done. Therefore, we should try to maximize our ability to spend time uh, with high intensity of focus so that we are able to get more productive in our uh, work sessions. Organization system. Cal Newport also proposes an organization system that is both uh, realistic and effective. This consists of no more than five minutes each morning writing your day's to-dos as well as deciding on which days are you going to tackle your future tasks. So then the next day you're able to uh, enter your deadlines and tasks onto your calendar, into your system, into your to-dos within five minutes and you are ready to go. You're up to date and you're on top of your work. Declare war on procrastination. Cal Newport asked these straight students whether they were able to beat procrastination or not. And the unanimous answer was I don't. Australian students don't defeat the urge to procrastinate. They don't love all work. The difference is that they just know that work has to get done, whether they like it or not. The average student isn't able to control its urge to procrastinate. The straight students instead are able to sidestep the urge to procrastinate when it rises. However, they sometimes put work off for no good reason. Instead of admitting to ourselves, this work is boring, I don't feel like doing it, we make up excuses like, I'll be better tomorrow, I'll have more motivation, I'll be more creative tomorrow, things that in the end aren't true. Australia students don't rely on willpower and instead use these rules in order to be able to restrict the urge to procrastinate. 1. Measure work progress. You can use a journal, a notebook, or even a digital place like Notion. If you fail to complete one of your tasks that you are uh, setting you to do, write a brief explanation for why weren't you able to do so. Second, feed the machine. Eat healthy and regularly and maintain hydration to be able to have good concentration and focus intensity. You need to have as much energy as you can in order to be able to fight procrastination. Treat food as a source of energy and try not to drink too much caffeine at once to avoid being too unfocused. Make an event out of tasks that suck. Tell your friends you're gonna do it on that day on that hour so that you have some pressure to do it. 4. Build a routine. 
find consistent daily free times and free moments to be able to get your work done. 5. Choose your hard days. I am very fan of this one and it is about planning your hard days so that you are able to say, okay, this day I'm going to work extremely hard so on the next day I don't have anything to do. It's better to plan uh, the hard days so that you are able to uh, defeat procrastination. You don't just find the day you wake up that you have to do this much work, but you have already uh, established that this day is going to be hard. So you are going to treat this as a challenge instead of a threatening list. And this puts you in a better position to be able to win the battle against procrastination. When, where, and how to study. When. The common response for when to study was early. However, some students did prefer to study in the afternoon or even in the nighttime. However, nighttime is probably the worst time to study. You may think this is an interrupted time, but nighttime isn't that long. It is not as free and it is full of distractions. And your body starts to wind down and to become less focused. So try to find free times, free moments during the days so where you are able to squeeze some sessions and you don't have to study during the nighttime. As Cal Newport says, work hard, play hard where in isolation and changing locations your work is your only focus when you're in isolation and when changing locations you are able to make the study process a more dynamic one so that you are able to avoid burnout and be able to maximize your intensity of focus try to search for an environment that brings you as much intensity of focus as you can by the way studying in bed doesn't really work now how long Although this may sound counterintuitive for some of you, don't study more than one hour at a time. It's important to get an intellectual breather. When the students were asked for how long they studied, there were a range of answers from 30 minutes to one hour. Without a break, retention is about 30% after two hours. Through trial and error, high-performing students have been able to find techniques that work for them and have been able to conclude that uh, it is best to be able to, to work in little chunks of time so that you're able to have a huge intensity of focus on the thing, get the thing done and to be able to be more productive in the end. So if these students say that the best is to uh, study not more than an hour and to take breaks, you should do too. So if you found this video useful, you might want to read the book or listen to the audiobook, which is what I have personally done, to also learn about how to take smart notes and about how to master the art of exam taking. Anyways, I hope this video was helpful to you in some way or another. If so, I would really appreciate if you could hit the thumbs up so that YouTube uh, knows this video is worthwhile recommending to more people. And you can also send it to a friend you think might find it useful. And if you're still watching this far in the video, I recommend you to subscribe so that you are uh, able to receive notifications when I upload my future videos, which I currently do every two weeks. I hope you the best of luck in your journey to becoming a straight student slash productivity ninja. And thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.